Uh, I'll try and speak slowly, because um, I have a bit of an accent. That was a great talk by Branislav, and it's kind of interesting about what I'm going to do is, I got involved with this 25 years ago when nothing happened in my country. And uh, what's going to happen in Bra uh, you know, Bratislava in 25 years' time is kind of where I'm at with London, and I want to see where London and the whole of Europe, and actually the world can go with this subject. Um, let's make sure I've got this right. Yeah, we design cities for people. Um, we design actually the countryside for farming. And somewhere in between is nature. And maybe some people can recognize that photograph. I was there yesterday and it had come relevant later on. Um, we should design our cities for people and nature. And Branislav had a burnout when he was a financial advisor. I was a, a, a kind of punk. But the main point about it, I was an environmental activist who tried to make a policy in London. I knew nothing about this subject. I got on a plane to Switzerland, and I found out everything I needed to know to make it happen. And they made me a president. But you can't take the punk out of the president because... I might, not, I might be very technically knowledgeable. I might have designed hundreds of green roofs, but sometimes you have to ask questions. Is this the right way of doing things? And you can't take that out of me. Um, so I eventually wrote this technical report, which made a policy in London, which was celebrated by the mayor of London in 2019. It was a report that we produced uh, as the European Federation. And I went from activist to an expert, but I'm not too sure I'm an, ex um, an, an expert, really. I'm just a man who wanted to make a difference in his city. And there's a lot of reasons why we should do this, and I'm going to briefly go over these in a European context. We need to cool our cities down. I'm sure you had a massive heat wave here in Bratislava. It was unbearable in London. I went to Milan, it was unbearable. I went to Switzerland, it was unbearable. This is one of the hottest summers on record. And in cities, we need to cool cities down. Um, and there it is. That's from the EU. And we also have floods. We had some floods last year. People died in Germany. And I'm sure here in Bratislava and other parts of Slovakia, there's a lot of urban flooding. So we need to do that. And also over COVID, we know that in cities, people need places to be. And in cities, roofs provide an opportunity to do that. This is one in Paris, in the 23rd of Romesmont, which is, has very little green space, and this is actually now a community center where people gather. It's open 24 seven, which is kind of cool. And this is the city of London. Lots of roof gardens are now going up in the city of London. But, and I love this picture of a library in Birmingham of a man reading a book in the autumn on a roof. That simple. But I got involved in it because of biodiversity, and this will be throughout it. I'm, an inch, I'm a bird watcher. I've just spent two days watching birds around Bratislava. It's what I like to do. And I got involved because of this rare bird in the United Kingdom. It's not rare here. I've seen loads of them. And I started to get roofs put up like this. And these are roofs that we would call are appropriate for industrial landscapes, which actually in London, I know in Prague, I've probably here, that some of our industrial landscapes that have gone redundant actually have some of the most interesting wildlife on. So that's what I did. And it's interesting that in my context, we don't allow people to go on those type of roofs because they're for nature. But this is one in Berlin where people can sit by nature. This is not, you know, big high-end landscape design. This is just a meadow where people can enjoy wildlife. And... This is what we did. We, I was thinking when I looked out of the castle, that's sort of the Tower of London in the background. This is on PwC, which is a big accountancy firm. They've just got a pile of rubble with a lot of wildflowers. And it was to me actually a planning requirement for the rare bird. And um, we can do that. But the key thing, and I like what Branislav said, and I, I think the, uh, um, the curator said, is it's about networking. And in 2002, I went to Switzerland, saw these ephemeral wetland roofs, and I thought, 
I want to do one of those in London. And so the networking and the sharing and learning from each other is very, very important, which is what the Federation does. So I went to London, designed a few of these, and then I brought some Swedish colleagues over and they went back to Malmo and designed a few, which is kind of cool. Um, and also what you'll find out later is about solar. And uh, again, in Switzerland, I discovered solar green roofs and in the United Kingdom. Oh, you can't put the two together. And I spent five years arguing how you could. And it's a good combination. Eventually, I managed to actually complain so much, I got to design the biggest solar roof in London at the London Olympics in 2012. And it met all the biodiversity targets that the Olympics had set, except for one. It's very difficult for animals to get on roofs. <laughs> so I didn't fail. And this is a really interesting combination, especially in the current energy crisis, because there's so much opportunity at roof level. And if you do it really well, you can actually make it better for biodiversity because the panels provide shade from the wind and the sun. And there's actually a rare butterfly that's found on this roof. I designed this one on a hospice for children, actually. Uh, and it's a hospice for children, but it's got a roof for the future. And Branislav asked me to tell you about some of the things that I'm doing. Innovation is the title. I'm terrible. I give a title, then I change it. But there's two things that I'm now involved with. Um, I set up a company to, uh, which was, uh, we did a contract for the European Space Agency, which is over in, based in the Czech Republic, which is how you can map green roofs in a city remotely and map where you could put green roofs tomorrow with no structural uplift. And also what we're also doing is mapping whether they're good green roofs or bad green roofs. Because you can put anything in a landscape plan, plan what happens when it's installed? And actually, it's relevant to the United Kingdom because we're the first country in the world to have a thing called biodiversity net gain, which is going to filter out across the world. And we're trying to measure whether you've got biodiversity net gain. So I've got a quick few slides of this is how we map them. This is the centre of London. And this is a retrofit project which we did in Manchester, which was funded by the European Union, even though we stupidly left. Um, and if anybody's interested in that, talk to me later. But the main thing I want to talk to you about, this is a, is a very long-term project or a mid-term project for me, is actually looking at how we can take waste and turn it into green roof products so we can make carbon neutral green roofs. Now what is there is an incinerator which produces ash, which can be converted into a substrate which captures carbon. So that is a carbon neutral substrate. And on the left-hand side is actually plastic that cannot be recycled and is either burned in the incinerator or exported to Turkey, Malaysia, wherever, whichever country we're in, they export it somewhere. And we could turn that into a product that could go on the roof. And there they are, you can see them, that's it all. And you can see a roof using the plastic there. And with that, we take local plants, and this is where I get to Bratislava and the border. Because what I've done, I'm a very sad person, I go around South East England, you can see South East England there, and I collect wildflowers from places. You can't get these plants commercially. And I collect them, and then I put them on a roof. And this is the roof of the IKEA in Greenwich, which will feature as I tie up, yeah? And I've been doing it for 25 years. <laughs> And I spent all summer with a, a bag in my pocket. I've been out in the Bratislava and uh, out in the, in the countryside collecting seeds here because I like to take foreign seeds back home. Nothing wrong with getting the gene pool up, is there? And um, what I want to do is make this model where you produce the green roofs in the city on a multi-storey car park and then you put them on your own city and the, f the wildflowers come. And it's a very long-term process and it's going to create jobs locally at cities. So that's what I'm working on. And then you could combine them with this, which Andreas will tell you about later, which is one of the most innovative things that I've seen in the last four years. And I'll leave Andreas to tell you about that. And... So the point of this is to design cities for people and nature. And 2019, when I just started, this was the most sustainable retail store in the world, about a kilometre from my house. And look, you can see the little green roofs on the side. A bit pathetic, really. And um, 
This is the area, and there's a bird involved in this. And you can see this is a, a industrial landscape which was being developed at the time. And then that building was knocked down and the IKEA was built, and it was the most sustainable retail store in 2019. It had three fantastic green rooms on. So the question is, that Branislav said, what is going to be the most sustainable retail store in 2039? And you all have got to make that a reality. But there was this bird which has collapsed in the United Kingdom, collapsed in the whole of Europe in my lifetime, and I'm 58. And there it is on the IKEA green roof feeding. And there's now, oh, I collect all those seeds, and there's the roof. And there's all these developments in 25 years that have been built on the Greenwich Peninsula, and they're all covered in green roofs. And that's where the linnets live. And I went down to the border between Hungary and Slovakia, and I went up to where Austria, Slovakia, and Hungary meet yesterday. And I was absolutely impressed with all the wildflowers at the three points. But when I went to this disused border post where probably you had to put your passport 25 years ago, 30 years ago, I don't know, covered in wildflowers from the surrounding fields. So and then I went outside the hotel and just over there, there's this wonderful exhibition about how they're going to transform Bratislava. And I saw all these green roofs and I was going, I hope they're going to collect some seeds from the border post and throw them on the roofs so that you've got real... Slovakian plants on your roofs. So, create green roofs for the future. I think it's in Slovak, carbon neutral, energy producing, and wildlife, delivering wildlife. Thanks very much. I might get my headphones. I need my headphones. I forgot my headphones. <laughs> uh, if there's any questions, let's say one, two, maybe three, you can ask and I will give you a headphones, okay? Yeah, thanks. Okay. Máme tu, v, napríklad, ak máte otázky, pokojne môžete, dve, tri, uh, lebo ten čas máme, chvíľočku sme si ušetrili, čo je super. Okay. Otázky. Nech sa páči, idem za vami, sekundu. OK, potrebujeme aj tak do mikrofonu, pretože potrebujú prekladať. To je problém pre prekladateľky, nie pre nás, rozumieme si. OK, the question is, how do you use uh, the plastic waste? The, the plastic waste is ground down into a crumb and then it is... Um, slightly melted by rubbing to turn it into a drainage board. And that's how it's produced. The microphone. <laughs> okay, don't move your mic, please. Oh, like so this. Don't move okay, thank mic. you. Sorry. Yeah. Is it for you? Is it okay? Dance well. Okay, yeah. thank you so much. Next question. I'm a bit hyperactive, sorry. <laughs> okay. Pekný deň. Na Slovensku často počúvam argument, že staré budovy nemajú dosadočnú statiku striech na to, aby uniesli takúto zelenú vegetačnú, či už extenzívnu alebo intenzívnu. A aké sú vaše skúsenosti z Londýna zo starších budov, možno zo 70 rokov, či sú vhodné na takéto úpravy? Yeah, I've got to be careful here, but um, actually... In... As I understand it, because I had a colleague who did some work in Warsaw, is actually a lot of the Eastern European, and I've got colleagues in Budapest who looked at this, actually a lot of the buildings built in, built in the 60s and 70s are actually a lot stronger than the roofs in London. <laughs> and uh, um, I, don't, I want to be careful. I think it was because labour was cheaper and concrete was cheaper. But, um, and you have snow. So my understanding is that actually you have slightly better structural capacity in parts of Eastern Europe, I don't know for Bratislava, than we do. We tended to build very, very cheap and quick. Dobrý 
Dobrý deň, neviem, či je to otázka pre vás alebo pre Bráňa. V tom projekte mapovanie zelených strech, striech, či bude zapojené alebo je zapojené aj Slovensko? No, not as yet, but I mean, I put it in just in case, you know, you want to. Branislav is saying, yes, we are involved. So, yeah, you are involved. But I mean, I put it in there. It's a little bit of, I very rarely talk about my business activities, but I thought, well, I'll throw it in because if there is interest, I'm here and you can talk to me. Okay, thank you very much. Branislav wants to say something. Brano, wait, we have to cez the microphone, okay? We have to read the translator. Močnička, ja, ja by som to chcel len upresniť, pretože uh, nie sme v tom zapojení, ale uh, v rámci Európskej asociácie sa robia tzv. Green Roof reporty, ktoré mapujú, uh, koľko striech pribudlo uh, za daný rok a uh, koľko je vlastne aj celková plocha. Čiže plánujeme sa do toho zapojiť. Uh, uvidíme, kedy sa nám to podarí v rámci kapacit. So uh, I'll, I'll do the question for the translators. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, how, is, there, is there a percentage of roofs that are new and what is the percentage that have been retrofitted? Yeah, yeah. Just for the people who don't speak English. Yeah. Uh, there's a very, very little that are retrofitted. And because we only have policy in London, I know what happens every year in London. In the United Kingdom, we're not too sure, but uh, there's a 17% increase annually in the number of green roofs going up on new developments. And London is about 60% of the market in the whole of the United Kingdom. Uh, as of 2018, I haven't updated everything. Okay. Je to všetko z otázok? Tak jedna, dve a už je to piata, siedma, už nepočítam, ale ja sledujem čas, takže je to v poriadku. Vysvetlím vám technickú vec. Existujú ľudia, ktorí nemusia a nevedia rozprávať anglicky a oni potrebujú preklad. Oni majú preto úška. Vy, keď sa spýtate v angličtine, prekladateľky, tlmočničky potrebujú to preložiť. To je celé, je to len technická vec. Ďakujem. Asi preto sa budem radšej po slovensky pýtať. A... Určite ste za svoju kariéru cestovali veľmi veľa. A videli ste a, tých striech strašne veľa. Čo by ste považovali dnes v tomto momente za 2022 ako zlatý štandard? He? Že ktoré mesto je najďalej, ktorá krajina je najďalej? Z vášho pohľadu. If I was really honest, and Andreas is here, and uh, I've got my Austrian colleagues, I've got my Czech colleagues, we, we have to go in terms of market size and uh, where the green roofs were developed is to the German-speaking countries. And uh, probably the Americans like to shout that they've got whatever they've got, but actually it's Germany, Austria, and Switzerland, which founded my federation and actually it delivered. If I was really, really honest, I am always um, inspired by what goes on in Switzerland. They do some of the most innovative stuff, but, and I say this again very carefully, but because they're so concerned about what they do in Switzerland, they just get on and do it in Switzerland. They don't necessarily tell the world. Thank, thankfully, we've got one of the most innovative things being spoken about today by Andrea. So I... I go there, which is not to say that the other countries don't do innovative things, because some of the innovative policies that are going on in the Netherlands um, and in Paris uh, need to be talked about too. So there's policy, there's innovative ways of doing the green roofs. And I took those ideas to the United Kingdom from Switzerland 20 years ago. And actually now people in other parts of Europe are doing that. So, you know, mainly because of me, <laughs> we're a bit of an innovator too. <laughs> you know, in the United Kingdom. And we're getting a very, very big increase. We probably got one of the biggest increases annually of green roofs in London, but that's because of a policy. And that's, again, not trying to wave the Union Jack because I, that's not how I do it. It's just we've been successful and other cities have been successful in Europe. And I just want to finish up maybe because I get off the stage. And that is what 
Branislav's Fed, and that's what our federation is about, is about how we all have conversations to make what happens here in Slovakia and Bratislava better for Bratislava and for uh, Bratislava and Slovakia. Thanks very much. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.